everybody. So in video 1800, we had a look at these things and some of the problems associated with them. We had a look at how a wire will behave when it's in a magnetic field and use that to work out that we could wind those much more easily using serpentine coils. We basically spread out the coil into this curvy M shape. Now serpentine coils have their place like every coil has its place, but we still have the problem here of having excess copper above and below because you wind a serpentine coil with the top part sticking beyond the magnet as it must do. If we could wind it so that top part didn't stick beyond the magnet, we'd get rid of this excess copper and so we'd be able to increase the power density and decrease the weight of the copper. That's really cool and quite a few, several very bright people pointed out that if you've got it like that, there is absolutely no difference to having a point. And wouldn't that point lead you towards star coils, that kind of thing? And they are 100% right. And in fact, it was invented by a German, and that's the kind of coil we're going to make. And it's called a foul harbour coil. Foul harbour coils are a zigzag arrangement along the magnets. That zigzag arrangement allows you to have everything in the magnetic field and so we can get rid of these. Now foul harbour coils are used a lot actually. They're used in these things, the drone motors. They're used in this because of course they reduce the weight of the copper that's needed. They're coreless as well, so it's not having to carry a core, and all of the copper is being used, and so they're able to spin at incredible speeds. I mean, this little motor, when you go up to 30, uh, 13,000 RPM or something crazy like that, it spins like Billy O. So in low torque and high speed applications like drone motors, they're absolutely ideal. Now remember, torque and speed can trade off against each other. But don't get carried away with the idea that, uh, that this kind of coil is the be-all and end-all. It has its uh, plus points and it has its negative points as well. When we pass a wire across a magnetic field, according to the Fleming rule, remember, then the strongest effect is when it's in that direction and the wire is moving like that. The current will come out of the wire. That's the strongest effect. If we put it at an angle like that, then at that point, more wire is in the magnetic field, and so we get a much stronger effect. But as the moves into the field at that point, much less is in the field. And so overall, on average, there is less field intersecting the wire than in a straightforward serpentine coil. So it's actually a little bit weaker. But it has this huge advantage of you not having to have the copper, and so the power density goes up. These things are always a trade-off. There is no perfect answer. It's always to do with what you want it to do. Now, I'm obsessed with the fact that the average wind speed in the UK is 7.8 knots or 3.9 meters per second. It's really slow. So I'm obsessed with I'm getting rid of cogging torque when it comes to making a generator. And that means I'm not having this big lump of iron. You don't have to have this big lump of iron, then you won't get any cogging torque whatsoever. Again, you pay a price for that. But coreless, motor, coreless generators sorry, are one of the hot topics in research for exactly the same reasons that I'm obsessed with them. Because they're able to scavenge low wind consistently and overall add up to more power because we just don't get that much high wind. But we're going to make a um, foul harbour coil. We're going to make a foul harbour coil by putting a triangular zigzag across the magnets. And of course foul harbour coils are normally made in a cylinder. Where is it? There it is, in a cylinder shape for drone motors. We're going to make it in a pancake shape, and that just means laying out the magnet and laying out the coil flat. Now, of course, that idea that when the wire passes across here, it's at its maximum strength, and when it passes across here, it's, it's a, it is at its maximum exposure, has led to other foul harbour coil designs where you're getting things like diamond patterns and rhomboid patterns and people playing around with those things. And you can do if you want, 
we're just going to do a straightforward triangle one and anybody who feels like getting into um, foul harbour rotors, foul harbour windings, there's a lot of stuff going on where you can explore it. Now, in order to wind a foul harbour, you need a former. You can't just wind it in space and hope it's going to hold. You need something to form it on. And when they form the cylinder ones, they use a wooden cylinder with pins in the bottom and then just wind it between those pins. We're going to use a flat disc, and I've got a disc of acrylic here. This disc of acrylic is 3 millimetres thick, and it's going to rotate over 12 magnets. And I've drawn the magnets on. I actually used a wooden disc with the magnets drawn on, put it on there, and then we've got our disc with the magnets drawn on. Now, when we wind a foul harbour coil, we go from the bottom edge of one magnet to the top edge of the other magnet to the bottom edge of the same magnet to make this triangle. And then we progress around winding that coil. It'll become more obvious when I put a few winds on it. Now, what I've done here is cut this out with two hole saws. So I've got a 50 cent, um, yes, a 50 millimeter plastic ring, a 12 magnets, and then I put a notch at the bottom of these inner magnets, and then a corresponding notch there at the top of the intersection, so I can wind those. And then when I lay every other wire, I'll put it put against that. Now, what, winding this, you can use anything you like. I mean, you can use thin wire and put lots on if you like. You can use thick wire and put not so many on if you like. But it can be a bit of a pain to go round and round and round all of that. So one really good thing to wind it with is Litz wire. Now, there's nothing particularly special about Litz wire. It's um, used predominantly in high frequencies to reduce the skin effect because uh, alternating current doesn't penetrate the depth of a wire when it's at a high frequency. It stays on the outside surface. Because it's staying on the outside surface, if you have a thick wire, the centre of the thick wire isn't being used. So what they do is bundle a whole lot of thin wires together that are electrically insulated from each other, and that tends to be how they do high frequency. So things like induction coils. Now you can make your own Litz wire really easily with just normal magnet wire that you wind together yourself. For winding your own Litz wire is a piece of cake. You just take some thin wire, I've got a mole grip at one end of the bench, the other end, I've got another mole grip, and all we do is run the wire between those mole grips for as many bits of uh, wire as we want. So we want 10, 20, 50, wherever it is, just until you get tired of doing it. Now, it so happens that my bench is 5 metres long, so I'm going to be able to make 10 metre length pieces of Litz wire by winding them round, snip it in half and giving it a twist. That will become clear in a little bit. So you just fasten the wire on, and then... We walk up to the next mole brick. Loop the wire around and go back on yourself. And you keep doing that, going backwards and forwards, until you've got enough wire. So when you've run the whole thing, find out where it is parting, and then put some zip ties along it, say two or three spots, just to hold it in little bundles. Fasten one end to something, the other end in a drill, and spin the drill. And there is my homemade Litz wire. Now there's 20 wires in this, so it's a bit like winding 20 coils all at once, which is really cool. Okay, so to wind this, we start at the first notch, go up to that second notch, and then come down to that notch there, and then we progress the same way up to that notch and so on winding all the way around now we can wind one of these two of these three of these as separate coils in which case we'll have a one phase two phase three phase so you can wind that however we like i'm just going to wind it up like this and then show you the first winding when it's all wound so i've gone around once making that star pattern now all i do is go around again but this time in the one next to the notch. So the first notches help you get everything lined up and then of course every wire follows every other wire and I've put it around a bobbin to help me feed it through the central hole. As I say, you can make it one, two, three phase if you want. I'm just going to go around until all of that inner ring is coated with the copper wire, and that gives me my coil. Of course, the outer 
is going to be a little sparse, uh, more sparsely coated. And that's just because of the um, larger diameter. But keep on going until you've done that. If you want three fairs, remember, wind it only until it's a third of the way across and then do the next coil and the next coil, the second and third. Third, and you'll get three fairs. I'm just going to do a single fair, so I'm just going to keep going until this is coated with wire on the inside. OK, that's it wound. Once we've wound it, we can lay it down, get a block of wood and just back the edges to make it all a little flatter and prettier. And when we cover that in resin, that is our coil all wound and ready. Now, with this, you get a choice. You can either keep the coil still and spin the magnets or keep the magnets still and spin the coil. Each one comes with its own pluses and minuses. If you spin the coil, of course, you're going to need something like slip rings. If you spin the magnets, then you're going to need to make a much more robust build because the magnets are very much heavier, of course, whereas this is incredibly light. So if we spin this, that's probably about as good as it needs to be. We'd have to put a central section in. I have, in fact, kept the disc that I drilled out and the disc would go back in there. A little bit of trimming and we put the disc back in there and we get a coiled disc that we can actually spin and of course the way to finish this now is just to put some plastic down, put some car resin on it and leave it to turn. But that is how you go about winding one of these coils. Anyway, I hope it was of interest. I will make this into a generator at a later date, but I wanted to show you how to wind the coils. Thank you very much for watching, and please do remember to like and subscribe.